promise is you won't. Okay, so this is the, um, <laughs> the June 11th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Um, Frontier Community Access Television is taping us for future viewing by our residents and the public. Uh, first item, I would like to uh, move an item up on the agenda. Uh, announcements, anybody have any objections to that? Okay, um, I'd just like to say that Tom, our town administrator, has been elected by the Massachusetts Municipal Association uh, to represent District 1 for the Massachusetts Municipal Management Association. District 1 represents 89 towns uh, in the four western counties of Massachusetts. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So, just a, just a note, Tom is the management rep, and I'm the selectman rep. Oh, so gee. Conway is well represented, well represented on the board. Uh, we, we don't have a mayor. We, give that, <laughs> we can't have a mayor. And I would like you to put something on the front page of the website to that effect. No. Oh. Okay, no. please. Okay, thank you. All right, next item on the agenda, minutes for um, Tuesday the 29th. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah. Yes. Any changes or additions? No. No? We're all set? accept. Okay, I'll make a motion we accept the minutes for the 29th. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next item is uh, warrant or, uh, warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $14,061. A payroll warrant of $108,302, payroll deduction warrant of $26,804, and a correction warrant uh, for the school of $519. That's basically a, a, an adjustment in the, in the meals program and the after school activities. All right, I'll make a motion to approve those warrants. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Meetings attended by select board members. Bill. Thursday, I was at the day-long Department of Revenue new selectman training in Holy Cross College in Worcester, right down the street from Holy Cannoli Bakery. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, Saturday, I was at the same location as John in Natick Community Hall for the Massachusetts uh, Selectmen's Association new training as well. So, two trainings in one week. Mm -hmm. Okay, Phil. I'm trained up. You're, You're ready, ready to ready go. To get you. Okay, Robert. Uh, so I went somewhere that maybe isn't exactly select board related, but I was uh, Conway's delegate to the Democratic Convention uh, uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. We, you know, uh, it's mostly a place where you get to talk to many of the people that we all talk to, you know, over our normal life, mm -hmm. um, except. And there's not that many Republicans, so so almost everybody that that we deal with, who are mostly Democrats, um, were all there, mm -hmm. and, and that was great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we had we had an MCAP meeting last Thursday. Uh, the M MCAP stood for the Municipal Coalition Against Pipelines. It's still in place. We meet about every three or so months, um, and I wish I could say that. You know, we defeated the pipeline, and it's not anything to worry about anymore. But it seems to be raising its head again, and the coalition might become more active. Okay. Okay. And uh, and then and then last Saturday, I was at a, um, a climate change leadership workshop that was mainly aimed at selectmen. So there was a great many Franklin County selectmen and other selectmen from from the valley. Um, it was run by the Sierra Club. It was pretty basic, but it, it's always really great to hear the things other towns are doing. Mm -hmm. so that's okay. wonderful. Great. All right, as Phil mentioned on Saturday, I was also at the, um, the training for new selectmen, uh, primarily because I'm on the board and it was a command performance for me to be there. And also because even though it was training for new selectmen, you always learn something from being at those at those trainings. So it was it was very very good session. I thought I would have liked to have seen handouts for those first two sessions, but aside from that, I thought it, I thought it went pretty well. I also had a um, a meeting with our town council, Jack Fitzgibbon, that I won't go into in detail now. I'll go into detail in our executive session on that. Okay. 
All right, and that was it for me last week, relative to, to our, our meetings. Uh, public comments, do we have any public comments? Don't see any, okay, we'll pass public comments. Old business, meeting with Colonial Power Group regarding electricity aggregation, Mark Capadonna and Denise Allard. Let me just start out by saying that, that Mark and I have known one another a long time. We are competitors. Okay, I know these these guys. They do a great job. Okay, and and we're in good hands with them. So that's that's all said. Okay. So that'll cut down on the questions. <laughs> <laughs> and your company didn't bid. <laughs> well, that, that, well. L all right. Let me let me say why that happened. That's because I'm involved with the FERCOG. Ah, okay. And uh, the, the the partners uh, are are really the FERCOG. Um, mm. yeah. mm. You know, yeah, right. <laughs> and the partners are really, you know, um, strict about the conflicts of interest. Mm. So they decided that since my involvement was there, they didn't want any perceived conflicts of interest. So ah, we did not submit mm. a bid, and that's the reason. So, well, the only two bidders that we were really hoping that would bid. I mean, we would have loved more, but we're you two guys. So. Um, Okay. So, well, so you, you didn't lose. No, no, no. So it, it, was, it was, you know, we're thrilled that we're, th we're thrilled with Colonial. Okay, so that's good. Okay. Do you guys want to say anything? So I don't. Do you want us to talk about aggregation as a whole? I don't know if it's been talked about in this form before. I can run through exactly what we're talking about here, uh, embarking on a municipal aggregation. That, that would be good because people do watch this and they will learn what the plan is. In, in a way, this is directed to everyone in town and there <laughs> is a number of people who do attend these meetings by watching them um, over our community access television. So, so uh, I guess I'm going to do a quick synopsis of kind of the process, what's going to happen. So we're talking about municipal aggregation. This is the, this is the power supply portion of your electricity bill. So. Here you're going to continue to have Wamiko or Eversource West as your uh, distribution company. But on that, currently everyone that's on basic service, this is the program that would move you from basic service with Wamiko or Eversource to another uh, competitive supplier, whoever the low bidder was. <coughs> the hot button, button item is, it's an opt-out municipal aggregation, meaning if you do, before the program ever starts, there's a bunch of steps that I'm gonna run through, but for the end user, before the program ever starts, everyone gets an individual mailing, and it's up to them to make a decision. So truly the town is only bringing a choice to the end user. So basically what you're saying is, is if you'd like to join, you certainly can join. If you don't wanna join, simply sign that card, give us a, a, a phone call, go on the internet and opt out. But if you don't opt out, you'll be automatically included in this program. That's the thing I want to get across here. It's a municipal opt-out. So it's just the opposite of the way most programs work. They do that so that we have a, a low profile that we can actually bid upon. What are the steps that are necessary? Town's already passed town meeting. That's done. It's, it, 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 the hardest step is already completed. After that, we're gonna, we will bring you a plan. We'll show that plan. Afterwards, we need to hang that plan for three weeks, 15 days that uh, the department would like to see that hung, be on the town website here at the clerk. So anyone wishes to, to make a comment on it, certainly more than welcome to do so. We'll respond to any comments that come in, uh, and help you guys answer any questions that may come up from the public. After that, this board needs to vote on it and approve that plan. Once the, once the, the um, select board votes and approves the plan, it's kind of, that's your, your part is done here. We'll work, walk with you. We'll go to the Department of Energy Resources. There's about a half an hour phone call that they'll run through your plan, tell you what's in it, make sure that everything's uh, up to snuff. This is going to be somewhere around our 70th plan, so they know that most of it is kind of boilerplate for them at this point. After you're done with that, you'll get a letter from them just saying that you have consulted with them. And then we move on to the Department of Public Utilities. Unfortunately, that, pro that process is, is longer than it should be. What used to take us around five to six months has lately been taking us eight months. So I would expect, you know, it would be aggressive for us to say that we would be able to get out there in the marketplace for January. It's possible, it really depends on the department, but I don't think so. It would, it's possible, 
late February, March time frame. If 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 not, we would shoot for that next July when that meter rate, excuse me, when that summer rate comes out for, for uh, and there would again there'd be a, a, a bidding process. You'll see all the prices. So nothing commits you. There's no expense on you until a, a contract is signed. So up until that point, you can say I don't like the pricing and it's not a problem. So the town isn't committing to anything until down the road you get an approval from the Department of Public Utilities. After that, we go out to bid, and then the process starts in earnest. And that's where kind of education really starts. And the reason we do that, this process can take anywhere between six and 12 months, and people lose it along the way. So what we do is once we get an approval and we, we have a signed contract, that's when we like to actually get the education. We'll come out to a town meeting or, or you know, an informational session or, or what have you so that people can get their questions answered, give you frequently asked questions and so forth and so on. That's kind of what I'll call the uh, uh, aggregation 101, kind of from soup to nuts. Not a lot of details there, but that's basically the timeline we can expect and the steps that are required. So we're, we're hopeful that it's a really light lift for this group really it's just um i think the hardest thing is the weight and we apologize for the weight it's truly out of our hands though and and um once we're done we'll, we'll get to the other side and then we'll get to the kind of the good stuff where people get to, to have choices for the first time they can choose green products they can cho choose local products those are the kind of things that could be done are your uh, green products generally also priced lower than uh the standard uh, eversource Lumico price so, so as of late, yes, they have, and it just depends on what type and how much of a green product you're looking for. If you're looking for a 100% mass class one, no. But um, the town of uh, the city of Pittsfield decided to take a 5% more, um, what would be an SREC two, and they were able to get that under for last summer, excuse me, last winter and this summer underneath basic service. Um, it, it's a local and it's green, so yes, but. It's not as green as, doesn't have as many renewable qualities of say a national wind, but that's a national product and they wanted to do something that was gonna help the local economy. So it's truly kind of what you decide is what we're gonna bring you. And we're gonna to listen to you if you're looking for local and green and so forth, there's lots we can do. So when do we give you that input? I would say any time after the, you, you know, any time after we file the plan, we can start to have those conversations. So the plan doesn't have to have that level of detail. We don't want it to have that okay. level of detail. And the reason we don't want to have that level of detail, what's in that plan, the department will hold you to, and that's an unregulated portion that we don't want them to have any regulation over. That's for you to decide finally. Okay. Great. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of new to, to the, the concept of aggregation, and I would be inclined to defer to my colleagues who have studied this matter in great depth in no general. No deferring. But, but, um, and my questions to you are going to display a shocking level of ignorance, and I apologize in advance. But, um, uh, so, you, the, the concept that you as an, uh, as a, an intermediary between Eversource and the ratepayer is going to reduce people, the price that you pay to Eversource, um, Is like um, <clears throat> it, com com if it was such a good deal for people, why why is it op why isn't it opt in instead of opt out? So, so th that question is is if we had an opt in product, and then I, I went out to the supply market, I would say, okay, we're going to have an opt in product, say for a kind of condo. How much energy would you have them purchase for the opt in product? Product. How many people would take it? <clears throat> um, Depends how much money you can show them that you're going to save. Yeah. But what we don't know. We don't know until you go up to bid. And that's why they, somebody that knew the energy markets, right? So we have to say to them, here's the load profile of the basic service customers. And then we can have expectations of how many people will opt out. And now I have a load profile that I can bid on. I know when they're going to use the energy. I know how much they're going to use. I know how many customers. So I know what my ICAP tag is. Now I can, I can formulate a, a solid price that I am not at, at risk for. I, I know what I'm looking at. Energy supply company. That, that's why it's opt-out. Do you have another answer? The, there is an opt-in product. And, and there, the is, there is a product yeah. called the com individual competitive supply 
And if you go to Eversource's website, there'll be a page you can go to that will say who, who you can buy electricity from, and it'll give you a long list of companies like Viridian that you can go to and buy your electricity from, with lots of promises about how it is. And, and those companies have turned out to be scamming people so commonly, virtually all of them, that the Attorney General is trying to, is right now writing a bill that she hopes to get the legislature to sign to remove the entire individual competitive supply market from Massachusetts. There are 14 for, other... For residential customers. For residential Yeah, customers. I just wanted to make sure that's a big thing. <laughs> there, there are 14 other states that do this. All of them have the same problem. They've all tried to regulate it. None of them have been able to regulate it so that people are not commonly cheated. She said over the last couple of years, I think it was five hundred thousand dollars have been, you know, people have been cheated out of, or maybe some millions out of one hundred and seventy-five million dollars. Is that how much it is? And, and it's Since two thousand fifteen, a huge amount of money, and that's when people people believe they're buying electricity at a cheaper rate than Eversource, and actually what they pay is way more than Eversource. So, so this this is this is an alternative to that. It's heavily regulated. It has to get approved by the DPU, and uh, and in order to make it work, it has to be opt in, and, opt and, out. And and the and the good the good news is that I think is kind of turn the tables on the supply community right now. When when you enter those kind of contracts, a lot of small print, and there might be a, a termination fee or an evergreen clause. In this, it's your terms and conditions. You get to say, free opt in, free opt out. No, no penalties. All of those things. If you want to serve the load, this is the these are the terms and conditions for you to do it. But we, we, have, we have to buy it before we know what it costs. No. 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 Nope. You'll be told this is what the price is going to be, and do you want to be part of this or not? And you would have to send back a postcard or make a telephone call <coughs> to say no, you don't want to do it. So, if an EverSource representative were sitting right here, would they agree that this is a benefit to the ratepayers in our town, and that they that we would. The yes. rate payer would save money over there providing it directly. At Eversource, Eversource and National Grid no longer provide the supply. They go out to bid just like we would with a, with a supplier. They don't care who supplies the electricity. They're just passing it through. They make no money on the supply. They make money on the transmission and the delivery. So they're neutral to who is the supplier. What we're doing is going out with competitive suppliers that can... Um, basically have a strategic point in the market to bid for pricing, whereas Eversource and National Grid go out at very specific times in the market, whether the market's good or not. That's why you see some of these high prices with those two, with the, with the utilities. Okay, and then a, a couple of questions about the RFP that I read through um, that, that, that you submitted, I guess, or that you... We wrote the RFP with FERCOG, and FERCOG submitted it to the RFP market, and, and Colonial responded. So I didn't see anything in there that required um, uh, safeguard of cu customer data, uh, of, of privacy and whatever, that the amount of electricity that a given address uses should be safeguarded in some way so that it cannot be, I mean, one of the things that you're getting to is a public shaming of high electricity users. Um, and. I mean, it's taking place in some states already. Not, but so, 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 what, what are your, where could I find what your policy is with regard to uh, safeguarding customer privacy and data? So, so, this data, it's an excellent question. So, this data cannot be shared with anyone but the winning supplier, right? So, it, it goes out without any. When we put it out to bid, we strip out any customer um, specific information, mm -hmm. and, and it's just an account number and then the 12 months of, of data. And then they bid on it. After they get it back, the winning supplier, in an encrypted file, it goes over to them. They're not allowed to market to them. It's right in the contract. You can't market to them. They can't sell the data, all of those things. When, when that contract ends, that supplier has, has to deliver back to Colonial all of the accounts that have, that have been on the, the aggregated, um, in the aggregated load, making sure that the load asset is, has been emptied. The next supplier gets an encrypted file that they, again, part of their contract. They can't call, they can't market to, and they cannot sell those to, to profit from that at, at all. But they have to have that data to serve. But at no time can they do anything with that data for their benefit. 
But you have the data. We have the data. So, That's uh, correct. So I, don't, I thought that your question was, oh. what's the what guarantee do we have that you will oh. protect the data, not 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 the supplier? So, oh, so from our standpoint, and I apologize. No. For, for, for I was my, interested in the other part too. <laughs> I didn't ask it. So. From, from our standpoint, everything holds is is an encrypted file in the cloud. We we don't truly we get a file from a. a from a secured utility website, from that point forward, it stays within our house, and then we have no, it's not in our contract, but we don't use that data in any way other than to transmit it for the RFP, and then to move it for the enrollment. That's it. Two emails that go out. In the first one, you couldn't do anything with that data anyways. It has an account number, and simply, you're a residential account, you're a commercial account, and then your usage doesn't help anyone other than to show them exactly what the load profile is so that they can bid on that load. The, the Department of Public Utilities has a very strict consumer uh, department, okay? Uh, if any of that data was to get out, okay, that would be terrible for anyone who did that. So you don't want to get, you know, uh, on the wrong side of the Department of Public Utilities because you want to stay in business. So that consumer protection is, is something that's vital. So, okay. And from our standpoint, we, we do, I, I think that's a great point. I don't think there's anything in our contract that we would never do anything, but in the ESA or the electricity service agreement that you will have with a supplier, it, it requires them to follow these guidelines. They're not allowed to use any of that data. But probably on those individual contracts, they can sell that data and so forth. But on your contract, they cannot market to you. But, you know, they can't sell the data and so forth and so on. Okay. So, and then the, my the other. So I saw that the your company gets compensated um, by a percentage from the distributor. Uh, by the remember, supplier. The supplier. That's correct. So, and um, but I. I is that a flat fee? Does that ever change? Does that increase? Are you capped at the earnings that you make per person? And if it ever increases, does that go to the towns, to the rate payers, or to you? So, so the our fee is a usage fee in a sense. So the risk is if the if the price isn't good, people don't stay in. But our fee is point zero zero one or one tenth of a penny per kilowatt hour, and it stays for the life of the contract. It doesn't go up, doesn't go down. It really depends on. If it's hot or cold and, and how usage goes. It's kind of our risk. But that does not change for, in our contract. Right. So if Conway decides not to do this, we don't pay anything. That's and, correct. And, uh, and um, they, they only get paid by the electricity they buy for us. Okay. But yeah, that concludes for now the Phil Cantor question hour. Great. <laughs> Excellent. More questions? <laughs> I'm thrilled we're getting started doing it. Yeah, do oh, yeah, that's true. I'm we sorry. just brought the steps, a couple of copies. Oh, just to in, in case anyone wants the steps, I'm sure John can provide them. Have, well. have, yeah. um, have you guys reviewed the contract? Yeah, it was pretty okay. pretty basic. Any, any questions on the contract itself? No, I'm thrilled to hear that yeah. Phil read the RFP because the contract references the RFP. Right, right. right. So, it makes sense yeah. of the contract without it. Right. It, All right. If there are no questions on the contract, I'll make a motion that we sign the contract. That's second. Okay. Do I have a all in favor? Aye. I guess so. <laughs> Is that a yes? Um, yes. Okay. All right. Um, how many contracts do we need? Do we have? Do you have another copy? I do. I do have a copy. Might that be filled in? I don't know. Well, yeah. well, how did you have it filled in, John? If you want us to take it back, we'll just make copies. We, we, no, it's all oh. it's all I, here. I can print out another one. And it's, Easily. Yeah. Right. You want to copy it or print it out? No, I, I, can, I can copy it. That, that's the same. That's the same contract. There's so many ways with our names on it and everything. The game. It's done. Poor little rate payer. It's Denise's is about as good as they get. Um, <laughs> I, this is the end of another day. I don't know. So at the end, there was one. We may be ready to bid. The stock prices are high. Let's wait another month, and we expect they're going to come down. I just, so yeah, I just put the selectman kind of name in and the, the address of the town. I think that's the only thing I filled out separate from what maybe for a card passed along. 
and it is possible for them not to be. You know, some years ago, Eversource dramatically lowered their prices, and it really depends on how long you're out in the marketplace. Lots of people have decided capacity is a big, big piece of yeah, the and they said, "Oh, I want to stretch that out." So I think on the back end of some of these contracts, that will have massive savings up front. You might see some people slightly giving some of that savings back on the back end, but overall, the contract itself is going to deliver savings. But Eversource could dramatically suddenly lower their prices, and then you would say, well, I'm going to opt out. That's and right. You would just leave the aggregation and buy from Eversource until they raise their prices, and right. then you could opt out. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly correct. That's why I feel like the town's truly mm -hmm. bringing a choice. And that's the biggest difference between the individual competitive supply. You cannot opt out. Mm -hmm. You sign like a two-year contract, they give you a great rate for the first six months, and they say, and you know, we'll let you know what the, what the rest of it is, and then they jack up the rate. And you cannot leave the program without paying a big fine. You got two to sign. Okay. <clears throat> um, a few more copies mm -hmm. of this. I don't want to talk to kind of the steps. We have about 14 pounds that are all doing this together. So that'll give us a large enough That's buying. Small. Keep one for myself. I need two for Did I send the wrong one? I'll send you. Sure. That should be in the middle. Yeah, I don't know. I did one, he did one. They probably were different. Somebody than chipped the in my head. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have my glasses on. It's a certain <laughs> And you're doing this at Charlemont in yes. half an hour. Correct. <laughs> That's the hope. Good luck there. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to keep this for ours. Yep. Perfect. Absolutely. Mark, Denise, thanks Good for coming time. in. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you, Denise. Great pleasure. Nice meeting you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Much. Absolutely. Yep. Look forward to it. Okay, next item on the agenda is the uh, Festival of the Hills final contract. Um, this is basically what we did last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Same slightly thing. revised just to make it a little bit better. Um, we'd had some boilerplate that didn't really apply in there, mm -hmm. but uh, this is the remainder of the amount that they have. Last year we gave them $10,000. They had somewhat over eighteen in the account. Mm -hmm. This is the 8000 plus that they have left. So this will discharge the, uh, the that relationship okay. finally. And any questions on the Festival of the Hills? Is this the way we've always done it? The, no. the Festival of the Hills used to be part of. They used to be a committee of the town, but now they're a separate organization. So we have to agree on some of the town services that they get during the festival. And, and this is. They had collected a bunch of money that was basically the town's money that they use as, that they typically would use as the Kickstarter for the next year. So when they went off on their own, we said, okay, we'll, we'll provide you with that money until it's gone, and then you're sort of on your own. So this is money from the Festival of the Hills that we're giving to the Festival of the Hills, but it came from it as a town group, but this is a contract so that's that's the way that we can get them the money that they're um, that they're used to dealing with at the beginning of the. Because I mean, I, I, I guess I understand that that protects the town more than if it was just a committee from liability issues and whatnot. Yes. Um, but at the same time, there's looking at a four-page legalese contract just struck me as less than friendly mm. and less than. Uh, I'm not. This is the last time we have to do it, so that's good. Um, and why is that? Because this is the last money that we're going to give them. 
This is the end of their pot of money. We turned over half of it last time. We're turning over the other half of it this time to them as a group. To so how are they going to start to the festival up next year before they have revenue? Sure. They will have to make enough money this year to do that. That's part of them becoming independent. So there will be a decline in the amount of scholarship funds available as a result. Could be. Um, it depends on how they manage. Just when my daughter is becoming a senior, and I would be entitled to that. <laughs> well, let's hope not. Uh, Good job, the, Dad. You know, one of the problems is is, is that they uh, shouldn't. Uh, they, there were lots of problems with the way they were functioning, and it's it's much better for the town that they're independent now. And um, so we do hope that things continue the way they have, but it's up to them now independently. Dear. Any other questions? And this is something that they did request. Okay, uh, that's good to know. Yeah, this is this is all right. Their, their request. That felt there. Uh, I was worried yeah. about yeah. that. Good. Oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't us. It was their request. They wanted to become a separate organization. All right. It would be fair to characterize it as mutual, but they, they did support it at town meeting. All right. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All right, I'll make a motion that we sign the contract with the Festival of Hills. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Put my glasses on this thing. Okay, next item on our agenda at 6.30 is the joint meeting with the Capital Improvements Planning Committee Work Plan. Dana, come on up. Yeah, the Roy is planning to be here as Sorry. well. Again, Roy, Roy is here. Oh, Roy is here. Yeah, Roy, Roy is here. Russell. Russ is here. Roy is the here. R's. They're all coming. All right. The R's are out in the hallway. Russ and Roy, pull up some chairs. There's a chair over there. The nice chair over there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just one more copy of this. So this is the process that they gave. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a copy of this? Yeah. 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 I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Oh, can I have one of those? You got all of them. As a side issue, I've been buying my electricity for about 10 years now, mm -hmm. and have never experienced a problem with signed contract. For whatever with the time. Thank you. And that's what it is. Well, you're a businessman, so you look for those details that yeah. a lot of Just residential for the meeting record. Yeah, I don't know. Accounts oh, okay, are not good. Everyone has a but it sounds like I might lose I that. Okay. Ability to do that? Just no. No well, uh, well public utilities. I, I, I think it's a long way off before they can yeah. actually do that. But we'll see. <clears throat> We hope you'll join the aggregation. Maybe the price, that price will be lower. Not to be the same since last spring. Okay. All right. I would say <clears throat> it's the first time I've seen this, but it's not new news. No, no, these are just notes that I put yeah. together. I, I uh, brought some of them to the select board a couple of weeks ago. They made some changes in this. And so I have I've, a concern I've adapted going that. into this. That it looks to me like there is a lot of work to be done here. Mm hmm I would agree. And uh, I guess my concern is how much help are we going to get from outside, or do you expect this committee to do all of this? I mean, it seems like we have assistance and secretarial help and everything else becoming quite a popular thing in town now. And, uh, I, I, I don't see this committee, I'm speaking for you guys, but I don't see this committee doing all of this research and... and well, I guess, don't, don't you guys have a spreadsheet of um, what we have? We do. Right we do. Okay. okay. We, we have trucks. So it needs to be spruced up, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so you're going to the different department heads. I mean, I, I would look for you guys to say to the various departments, this is what we need, this is when we need it, and then you can provide us with that information and we'll go from there. Well, okay, that's that's one of the functions of, of the capital improvements 
planning committees to get that information from the department. I think we need some help. I don't speak up, guys. Am I, well, uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Or? I think the you know there are some standard areas where help is always welcome, in my opinion. And one of those that comes to mind is what get with a given a given skill set in the highway department. Do we? There are the there are the by new versus by used. There's uh, bought purchase versus lease. And if it's purchase, how is it financed? I, I don't think we get into whether they. I don't think we should get into. I don't think it's our mandate to get into, except maybe to raise a question. But like, why do you need that piece of equipment? In my opinion, that's. Not us. That comes from the department and maybe you guys. I think anecdotally we might say, well, why do you need this piece of equipment? I don't think that's that's not our main goal, I, at least as I read the mandate of the committee. Well, I think, and I've stated this before, that at least part of our function is to provide these guys with some of the information that they need to make a decision and that would come from do you need it and why do you need it and how often are you going to replace it? But we, look, I think up to a point, the more opinions, the better. However, they're in direct contact with the department heads, i.e. Ron Sweet. We are not in direct contact with them, although we could, it's a small town, we could get into contact. But you can ask him for a list of his trucks and equipment, yeah. over $5,000. Yeah. That's an but, email. Right. But you guys cor can correct me if my reading of this committee is incorrect. The, the yeah. Capital Improvements Planning Committee is just to, to put together a spreadsheet and a timeline of when we're going to need certain things moving forward that are capital items for all the departments that have those items, those over 5,000 items. You know, you, you buy an item, how long is that item going to last? Okay, so you stretch it out over that spreadsheet for that the life of that item, and you figure when you're going to need to replace that item. It's just a matter of organizing it that way. Well, I and, think, you know, some of this is pretty, John, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory in the highway department. That, you know, is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. When you get into buildings and grounds, roofing, heating and stuff, I mean, where are we going to get that information Well, again, from? you have you have standard life of a roof. If we, did we just get a new roof? Where did we get a new roof? We didn't get a new roof here. We got it repaired. Okay. So, so we estimate a a remaining like a life <laughs> from that repair, and we put it into the mix. So that we know after that remaining life is over, we're going to have, to, we're going to need money to, okay. to do some repairs. And where do right. we get that information from? Well, no, well, we're not the ones who know the roof is leaking. These guys and the employees here know that the roof is leaking. So they observe or hear that the roof is leaking, and so and there's a plan of action that perhaps maybe Tom proposes. And at that point, I would think that we would come into play looking at that plan of action, but I don't think we would question whether the roof is leaking or not. I think... I don't know, Dan's asking a good question, I think. I think you, you both know, are. Who, who, you know, who think, knows that stuff? Who, who, yeah, who do we talk to? Well, I mean, I we're, we're just supposed to make a timeline, is mm -hmm. my understanding. Right. So if we estimate a roof is 20 years and it starts to leak at 15 years, somebody better tell us about it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Then we adjust oh, okay. the plan. Oh, yeah. 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 More to yeah. the point, the idea is to have a plan so that the roof doesn't start leaking. Yeah. yeah. That we know if we have a 20-year roof, it shouldn't start leaking at 15 years, and if it does, that's outside our scope. Right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're just estimating the right. useful life of these. Well, and would Ron who is going to tell us the roof how much, how long that roof has been up there, how long it's supposed to last, and how much it's going to replace from right. cost be? That's my question. So, so this is. But you know, you could, I, I totally agree if, with you. There. If, the, if that's there. a question, you, I was the one who arranged for this last time. <clears throat> um, 
you know, as, as part of this, she would say, okay, well, Tom, you know, we'll ask Tom to get us, you know, what it cost and what was done. And, um, you know, I, I did the roof. That's, that's one thing I did. So I, I have the information of who did it. And you can say, you know, can you find out, you know, some estimate on, I mean, this, this roof is, what, 150 years old, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's, this, this is a slate roof, you know. It's, it's a good roof. But, slate roofs need um, annual or semi-annual. But, but, <coughs> okay, so, well, that's more than I know. So uh, that, that's, that's exactly the kind of thing that needs to be wrangled. If I could go back. So that's what I would ask the guy who, who did the work. To, to what I was saying, in my mind, to answer your question about, in my mind anyway, the difficult pieces of this are getting that information. What's the useful life? What's the useful life of an excavator as we use it here, given the skill level and given what, given the way we met, can and do maintain the equipment? These are difficult and they're time-consuming questions, and I totally, to me, that, to me, those are the most difficult. But for the excavator, we know who to talk to. And again, for the roof, the, I don't know who to talk to. These, well, uh, these are these time. are estimates. Start there. Okay. Here, but how about that building? Or the, how about the it, garage? It's a these, well, these are yeah. estimates that may be adjusted every year, but it's just to give us an idea of what we have to come up with every year at town meeting, in the way of capital and money, to to keep things going properly. You know, it's it's not hard and fast. Okay, it's it's an estimate. But so here's another question I should ask, because since I'm on the finance committee as well, is it is it the purview of this committee to say lease versus buy, or is that something that the finance committee? That's the do? finance committee. So that's it. I think this committee's responsibility <laughs> is to present to the finance committee and to the selectmen. These are your options. If you want to lease it, it's this. If you want okay. to buy it, it's that. Okay. The, the, the primary goal is to have an inventory of capital items with a timeline. And it's true that the timeline can be for replacing at various times. You could have three different versions. Here's what it, this is. This would be a project for the committee. Here, here's what the here's what it looks like if you lease. Here's what it looks like if you buy. Here's what it looks like if you run it to the end of its life and you're you're putting money into you know um, repairing rust and uh, you know belts and things that otherwise wouldn't go. Um, so so that that you know you could you could run those scenarios certainly, but but. You know, we don't even have a complete list at this point. What I gave you guys a couple of years ago was what it was at that time um, for the things that we were considering. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the only item on here that's really new, well, there's a, there's a couple, I guess, the, uh, the trash compactors for the Board of Health. I hadn't thought about those. And that's some, some of the new um, uh, fire and ambulance equipment costs more than $5,000 as well, and those are not on the list. But th those, I would say you guys go directly to the department head and say, please give us a list of everything you have that's over $5,000, it's intended to last more than five years, and then you'll have at least the complete list to work with. And then you can run it out in, in different ways. You can say the five-year replacement, you can say lease, you can say buy, and then you know, we'll have something really solid to take the to town meeting. Yeah, it's basically an inventory of all those things, <coughs> the useful life of all those things. Throw that in a, sh in a spreadsheet and, and, you know, we can figure out what comes up at the bottom and what we need at each town meeting going forward. That, that's essentially it. Right. And, and I expect, I, I don't think 125000 a year is going to go very far. That's, that's 0. 0.5 down here. Not with the bridges. I mean, play. the bridges are ridiculous, but we know now what it costs to replace uh, to repair one that's pretty severely damaged. So, you know, the highway department's building in some maintenance, you know, tasks, which they, it's a whole new realm, and there it has its own problems being over rivers and things like that. So I don't want to monopolize the discussion. It's all right. No. 
So I think a, a fair cor course of action, I don't see why we start with a fresh slate, let's get a list from the department heads of those pieces of equipment. And then we probably, it will probably take several meetings of us to go out to the highway garage to maybe meet with Ken, et cetera, et cetera, to just go over some of this stuff and just get a fresh, a fresh inventory of it. You know, you have, you have that start, you have that list yeah, there, you yeah, can just add to it. And you don't, I don't think you have to do any, any inspecting. All you have to do is ask somebody for an email that says, give us, give us this information so we can put it into a spreadsheet. And we can then start to look at it and say, okay, here, here's what we have. This is what it's going to cost year to year. This is what we need. And, and, you know, talk to the finance committee and say, hey, this is what it looks like we're going to need. They'll come to us and say, hey, this is what we're going to need. And we'll try to get the money for it. And, yeah. and I did want to just go back to your very first question, which was, do you, do you feel that you have um, the right or the duty to substitute your own judgment to some extent about a given request? I'm just paraphrasing what you said. Um, but and or 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 is your duty just to pass it along and put it in the plan if the department head requests it, and and to I I don't think any committee in town should just ought to be a rubber stamp of any kind. I think if you're proposing so if you're, the committee is proposing something as a capital project, the committee should be in favor of that item as a capital project, um, or the, or at least it should make sense to the committee that. They, uh, that, otherwise, how is it ever going to pass town meeting? Well, if it can't, if it, if it can't persuade you guys that, that it is necessary. What, at least the experience in the past is, there's miscommunications, there's misunderstandings, etc. It's better because, you know, department head A might be saying one thing to these guys, they may say something slightly different to us because it's three weeks later and they think something different about it. So it really, and even in a small town like this. I, I think it gets botched up. And, and <laughs> certainly there can be questions at your level, at the finance committee level, at our level, as to you know, how, this, how this shapes up in, in the final mm -hmm. analysis. Well, I well, think... You know, go ahead. But we definitely get to vote on all of the new projects. People come and present capital equipment requests to this committee. Well, well I think that any citizen has the right to... Yeah, any resident has the right to ask anything they want about this stuff. Sure. So, I mean, if, if members of the committee want to, as as a resident, as a of Conway, want to be questioning, I think it's. I just, I I just don't think it's in our per. Then it gets to be really complex, and then we wind up having disagreements because you think the thing could be used this way, Russ thinks it's something else. I think it's yet another thing, and where are you know where are we? <laughs> so. Uh, I don't mean to say, belabor this. I really if, if there are policy questions, um, the select board is designed to be the policy setting body of the town. And everybody, the committee, the department head, residents can come, and, and this is the place where those policies are, are ironed out and a, and a final decision is made. Um, but, yeah, you know, general informative questions um, are always, you know, let's just... Well, I would, I would ask this. Um, you're in direct contact with these people pretty much all the time. Take the list that we have that you pretty much prepared. And I would assume that each department that's involved has that list or can certainly get it. Ask them to update it. When you get that, give it to us, and we'll go to work. Yeah, okay. that's, that's fine. I can do that. Sure. Because all of the departments know where they are, yeah. or they should know where they are on these capital items moving forward, and they can give you that information. And then, I, then I, my, again, not to beat the dead horse here, but some of these items, I don't know who was in charge of the maintenance on the town hall, the town office, the other buildings. And that's wrong. That's wrong. So he's the person that should supply us with this information. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And the board of health, obviously, on the trash compactor. Yeah. I think we had some stuff on that. And fire, ambulance, big users of equipment, police, a little bit less so, but they may have some. Sure. Right, so, Tom, here's a question for you. On the uh, planning model, spreadsheet model, is, is there... Uh, 
should we be inputting this stuff directly in there or first on our own worksheet? And because I'm, I, I don't recall how that was set up. Yeah, you can. I mean, you put it in directly. You can go directly, equipment yeah. by equipment. We've got yeah. a format there. Yeah, yeah and, and it uh, adds everything up right. and it tells you. Okay, you which know. makes it easier for others to well, use. Let me ask a technology question to you. Mm -hmm. Can we set up a spreadsheet that everyone can look at and, and edit? Yes. I would hope there's an okay. industry well, spreadsheet. Okay. Google Docs. Well, wait, you mean this model or, or some other spreadsheet or just in general? In other words, set up a spreadsheet that Ron can enter into, that Ambulance can enter into, that fire police can enter in their own information. Well, it should be this model, though. This, yeah. We should, so we should be working off of one copy of this. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. is it, you know, I'll have to look at it and okay. see if okay. mo how multi-user I can get it. And do, do we have, you know about Google, Google Worksheets? Yeah, yeah, sure. Google You'd set up a Google well, Worksheet. But, but yeah, it's yeah. not the model. Quote unquote, the model. Oh, which it, is, it could be. We could take that model right there and put, make it a Google Doc. This. And everybody can access it. Right, but this is not the uh, this is not the thing from Joe Marquero. Well, it includes that. The thing from Joe includes that. Includes that. That's the capital planning piece of okay. what he did. Right, but as I recall, there's every line here. There's a separate page for in that model. Not a picture of the right. item, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, that that that's that's some other. Some other town's capital yes, I plan. Saw that. That that's what oh. that's what you guys can generate okay. once you have the basic data. Okay. And then and then you fill out. So you fill out the form and you say to yeah. departments, yeah. okay, between this state and this state, you fill in your your you know inventory and let us know what you think about useful life. Then you guys look at it and say, yeah, I agree with this. I don't agree with this. This looks good. That doesn't look good. You're basically the arbiter of what they're putting in that spreadsheet. And that cuts down on, on the administrative load, but it gives you more decision-making time. Sure. Okay? Yeah. How's that? It's, it's good. Okay. And, and the thing that I, that I was drawn to in this was number six, was the, um, the presentation at town meeting outlining the concept of capital planning. And I know you, you made valiant stab at it at town meeting, um, I thought, mm. but the... The, the you know the the citizens leaning up against the wall saying how many hours does that machine have on it how, what year was that built the, um, definitely did not buy that agree with that concept with the concept of capital planning and so um, if, if we're going to lose next year I'd like to at least lose to a different or newer argument than the same one so because I think that that's so um, and I I, I thought. You know, I th hopefully we can help in that regard. Well, and that, that town meeting too, but that yeah. presentation aspect of it, I think, is is important going forward. You're, uh, you had uh, that included in number six here, right? That um, uh, speaking to town meeting about this is what capital planning is. This is why we do it. These are the recommendations we're making, and these are these is this is the result of of this um, giving some thought to these things. Okay, do we have a clearer picture now? Yes. Okay, so. good. So. All right. And just found some people spoke up quite loud that yeah. they didn't think that, you know, 1,600 hours on a piece of equipment was yeah. nearly enough to replace it. Yep. So, I mean, we need to sharpen our pencils, or Ron needs to sharpen his pencil a little bit more and do some more figuring. Well, the, the proof is going to be in rather what he has projected, in fact, happens. With this piece of equipment he's buying now? Any of it. You know, well, the, uh, what he's projecting is that the resale value is going to go down each year. And I think that's pretty clear. So that's what he's basing it on. And it goes on a curve like this. Yes, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, so, he's trying, he's trying to What he's to get trying it. to do is take advantage of this period of time. Here. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. And what yeah. little I know about it, well, not little, what I know about it is that that happens and, and mm. you know when you can combine the competitive equalization for political subdivisions mm. with the high residual value this is where you want to do it 
Mm -hmm. Two years later, you're down there. That's right. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. drop off can be steep. The money yeah. coming from the manufacturer stays the same, but the, the part of the equation is the residual value when it's going to. Mm -hmm. and, uh, can I just spend a minute here? Because I need clarification from you. Because you raised the same issue that you said. Well, the folks in the town meeting stood up, they thought 1,600 hours, and we better sharpen it. Is that our purview to? look at the 1,600 hours and now we're going to trade it in here's the estimated value we're going to get for it or whatever. I mean, is this because... We need to determine see, the model that we're going to use. That's a policy question. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And, yeah. and this, this board had supported going ahead with that model. Um, so but ultimately, it, and, it's and not again, it's, it's not it's not so much the question of the hours, it's the question of the resale value. And hours have a lot to do with the resale value, but they're not the only determinant of the resale yeah. value. Well, I guess, what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that before it gets to town meeting, the, you know, we come to this thing, we may not agree as individuals, like, you know, you and I may have thought that 1,600 hours is ridiculous, however, that's what they're bringing to us. And so, yeah, as the Capital Improvements Committee, we need to plug that in, make a line item for it, and and figure out down the road, using that model, what the costs per year basically are, so we can get it into our bottom line total of cap. So I, I just... And it's always it's, going to be an estimate, but because you never know what deal you're actually going to be able to make right. when it comes, when the time comes to make the deal. So yeah. I... So it, I just hate to beat this thing over the over the. It's we are we should not be making policy. Is is that what you're saying? Well, if if there's if there's something that's pretty fundamental, then a conversation with the top policy making board you, in the town. You is, certainly is should make for. recommendations. But well, some but well, somebody well. needs to stand up at town meeting and explain the five-year retirement program and why it's a good idea. So somebody could, somebody might have to get up and say, well, this is based on a model at 1,600 hours is the P, is the, it's ripe for trading as per the policy that the select boards set. It's not the policy yes. we set. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's, we're getting into the weeds here now. Okay. But the, I, think, I, think, I think that those are really good questions. Well, no, yeah, because and, this, and, I, and, I feel like it impacts you know. into how this committee functions. You know, if we could stay focused on, you know, the let's determine what the useful life is on this uh, piece of equipment. Let's plug it. You know, let's rather than. I think you you have to. Uh, get away from the useful life aspect somewhat and look at the financial aspect. Well, I, I mean, I you can take an excavator and, and, and okay. like, uh, so, I can't think of his name, he works for what's so maybe. Western Equipment or Rentals or whatever. He said, we run them 10,000 hours. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's because uh, they're a rental. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, that's a different yeah. thing. Okay. But, but so I... Listen, I don't. If if part of our charge is Mr. Owl up here, is yeah, yeah, yeah. is to be evaluating these things, then I agree with you. Then the then the task becomes much harder here, as a committee. Well, you can run different assumptions and different models too, and come up with what you know uses the least capital over the a okay. period of time oh, okay. or something like that's, that. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and you can make that enough. as a recommendation And we should well. present that to you guys and you and can we, And then we it. see if it, how it plays out in the real world and then mm -hmm. we adjust. Okay, okay. You, you get what I yeah. asked you for, I'll yeah. get that for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Fair enough. All right. Sure. Gentlemen, okay. thank you for coming thank in. You. Thank you. All right. Dana, yeah. good to see you next time. Roy. Sorry. Russ. I see you right. Hey, you are you sticking around or what? Huh? No. Salt okay. World Peace? Um, the, the Russian Congo. Oh, it's not on there. Okay. Right. okay. Right. Right. Well, well, we should talk. Thanks for having in. Good to see you. Good to see you. Brian, good to see you. Bill, welcome to court. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Me too, Russ. Right. Hey, Jeff. Sure. Stop going out. Again. Kathy, take care. Thank you. All right, next item on our agenda.
Treasurer, where is our treasurer? Right. Come on and sit and in the hot next. seat, Jim. As if by magic. <laughs> hey, I was pretty good on my estimate of the time, wasn't I? Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. What do we have? So I'm here with um, a contract for you to sign for the uh, collection software that I've been working on. Okay. So the consortium that we are a part of has signed their um, generic contract, which covers the uh, hopefully 13 towns that will sign on. And then uh, as a branch of that, there's a separate contract with each town. So mm -hmm. it, it, the contract gives a small summary of what's in the main contract and the specifics of the finances for each town. And the finances are, as I mentioned before, it was uh, roughly $6,100 for conversion, which the CSC mm -hmm. has paid for in full. They're paying for the first two years of support, which is uh, $3,150 a year. And then the third year, they'll likely pay for the whole support, but at least part of it. The fourth year, we're on our own. So mm -hmm. they're paying for quite a bit of it, which you may not have heard yet. But, um, and then, the, so the fourth and the fifth year are also in the contract, and they're uh, to have no more of an increase than 3%, maybe less than that, depending on how their company rates things. Okay, so there's an overall contract as well as an individual contract. Yes. So All right, now, how is the overall contract negotiated? So that was negotiated between the CSC, the Community Software Consortium, okay. and Quality Data. So okay. there's a board, I'm part of the board. Okay. Um, and so we, we, we basically based it off of the assessor's contract. They just uh, converted to another right. company, um, Tyler. Right. And so we based it from that, made some small modifications, put it through the DOR's attorneys, and so it's, you know, it's had quite a and bit of... Yes, DOR, okay, yes. Department of yes. Revenue, okay, yes. that's So fine. that's okay. all set, and that, you, you know, you're welcome to take a look at that, but mm -hmm. that's... Um, this and is, that's not one we're signing. No. You know, so the one you're either. signing yeah. is specific to our yeah. town. That, um, And so what, what happened was, when we went out to bid, um, they gave us a price for a minimum of 11 communities. There are 11 tiny little communities mm -hmm. we have, like Tiringham and, um, you know, Winsett. So, so this was a full 30B process? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I uh, went out to bid. The winning bidder was uh, Quality Data, their Connecticut software company. They've had to make a lot of modifications to fit Massachusetts laws into the mm -hmm. system, and they're really excited about getting going in Massachusetts because there's how, a how many bidders were there? hole in the market. Um, there were... Uh, Two, the third. There were actually three. The third one um, just wasn't even in the same ballpark. Okay. okay. Um, so the other bidder was a company. Um, shoot, what's their name now? Ah, I'm drawing a blank. But yeah. um, another company. Do you like the software? Is it? Is it? I helpful? love it? the software. It's it's right, going to be cool. really awesome. There's there's many Wonderful. many um, benefits to it. You um, you're already using it. No, no, no. You're, so we you're, we you're haven't been even testing it. So we've seen the Connecticut version. We okay. haven't seen the Massachusetts version yet. So we can't okay. actually see that until the contract is, is signed. Okay. I mean, we've, mm. we've seen, we've given them all of our input to, mm -hmm. uh, this is what we want our reports to look like. This is the things we are worried about. And they have been modifying their stuff all along. So, so the so complaints that Bob used to have, are, are those getting addressed? On seeing Bob. Bob Baker, who, who used to say, I can't look at my individual accounts. Uh, I've never heard Bob's complaints, so but I don't, I'm not that's sure. That's the accounting software. Yeah, that, this uh, is I, different. So this, this is, is a, the this is the collector software. Yeah, that's the okay. accounting software. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 So go with our it. with our, I'll, I'll go over some benefits, but um, so it's going to be fully online, and that's actually one of the things I wanted to bring up tonight because um, there'll be much more information available to taxpayers online. So if they want to, for example, um, they're filing their. Uh, taxes for 2017, you can just log on, pull up your name, and pull all of your uh, bill history. It's all right there. You don't okay. have to call the office and ask for it or collect all your bills. Or We get a lot of calls like that, people asking for their uh, bill payment history. So and now that you have internet, you can do a lot of things like that. <laughs> yeah. So it brings us up to, up to the you know, standards of current times. So, but the drawback to that is that there's also more information available, you know, as public information to right. other people. Mm -hmm. So Phil could so. log on and look at what I pay in taxes. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, I mean, he right well, he now can do that, he yeah. can call in right now and uh, ask yeah, or come in and yeah. ask. Um, this just makes it easier. It's at your fingertips. So. Um, it's all publicly available anyway now. It's in sit one-stop shopping. It would take me three different websites to figure that out. Right, right. So we actually have to determine how much or how little we want online. And I've had a talk with Lee because the assessors have, up until now, you know, kept um, some things private. Like, for example, the name and address of owners is not listed on their GIS system. Right. So mm -hmm. now you might be able to go to the GIS system and look at a map and lot and say, ooh, I wonder who owns that. Mm -hmm. And you can go over to my system and type in the lot and find out. Uh -huh. right. Um, right. So it takes a little bit of craftiness. It's not a direct link. And everyone uh, in Conway now knows how to do that. It's, it's <laughs> easier still to go to the Registry of Deeds, type in a That's street right. address, and they tell you. Registry of Deeds. So That's true. You, know, you can get, it, you the, can get the, a deed and a mail. It. You're right. So you know, there's information available. Just how easy do you make it for A literate fifth grader would be able to get, yes. get the information. Yeah. So, yeah. so also an, another nice part of it is that the assessor system and our system will talk overnight. So address updates will happen overnight, abatements, exemptions, oh, that's, all that back is, and forth. That is, that is uh, good. That that's is very we, good. We really appreciate that. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, our online payment system is also going to be live. So the way it works right now is we have to upload files. So when you get uh, delinquencies, once you go past the due date, we have to like update the next date and then update the next date. So mm -hmm. we're constantly working those online files. These two systems talk overnight so you get your mm, live okay. amount due and you pay okay that's great so we're that's really great. excited about several things there's also um emailing capability so okay. if you want to sign up for email billing you can we always okay. by law we have to mail a bill anyway but a lot of people really like to get stuff by email right right okay mail gets lost but they got their bill anyway okay um, so those are just a few of the benefits. Uh, so this company, w they wanted 11 people to commit, 11 communities to commit so that they would, uh, you know, put in the time and effort to sure. convert yeah. from Massachusetts. And then once they have us, I think they're going to go crazy all over Massachusetts and pull in a lot more people. So, so, 90, so there, are, there are 13? There's a, there's. Group? Yes, there are 13 that have given, as you have, the, the pre-agreement, the intention. They right. signed and an intention. How many have signed? I don't know yet, so it's due by June 15th. Um, we're, oh. we're expecting the 13 will. If they've signed the preliminary parts, nothing has gone Who's, wrong for them. Do you not know who to, they are? So. Yes, there's a, there's a list of them in this country. This, uh, So nothing's changed. I, I, we don't foresee any reason why everybody wouldn't sign on. Right, right. This company um, handles over 90% of Connecticut there. Mm. So they're good. It's cloud-based. It it's pretty affordable. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Sounds good. Yep, so Tom has the original document for you to sign. This is just a copy. It's in the, uh, and it's tagged. So I just need uh, one pink, signature. Uh, sticky on it. It's just one signature. Yeah. Okay. Where's Berkeley? Berkeley's down on the South Shore. Yeah. Out by like Bridgewater, Reno. I know where they are. Yeah. Yeah, they're down in... Uh, they must not have an exit on 495. <laughs> yeah, right. That's for sure. And it's good enough for Holly and Heath. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good most, enough for us. <laughs> most of them. Any any other questions of Jan? If you like it, that's wonderful. Yeah. I do. Yeah, okay. this is, this is going to be great wonderful. for us. I mean, we, the product we had before, um, we were... Uh, we had a one-man support team. So... Although it was affordable and you did a great job, uh, it was the opinion of the CSC consortium that owned the software that we really should try and do something different. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Um, any other questions of Jan? All right. I'll make a motion that we approve the contract uh, with uh, Mastery. Our contract is actually with who now? With quality data. Okay, with quality data. Okay. Uh, for, what is this, a three-year contract? 
five year. Five year contract, okay, for collector software. No second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Hope it works out to be everything you hope for and more. Yeah. So, so I'm also one of the beta test sites. So Ooh. sometime in June here, um, we expect to be giving it a try and see and running it simultaneously with my system now. Well, I would think works. just because they have 90% of Connecticut towns, uh, that's a pretty good recommendation. It is. I'll, I'll just add as a sidebar that uh, as we go to more cloud-based applications, it's one of the reasons that we need more internet speed um, up and down. If you get a lot of people who are on the cloud at the same time, it can be... Uh, Here in the office. Yeah. 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 I think you heard Roy talk about that at town meeting a little bit. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is a really good case in point of, of why it's, that's necessary. And also to give Roy thanks, he uh, took the time to review this very uh, wordy contract as well and came up with some couple of good things that we needed to address in it, mm, backup nice, nice. issues. So I was thankful that you took the time to do that. Yeah, anytime you need something with the technology side, ask for it. He's, he's, he's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thanks, Thank you. Jan. Yeah. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. All right, next item on our agenda is letter in support of, a, uh, of additional support for rural school districts. Um, this is for Senator Hines budget amendment number 318. Everybody, did everybody we, see this? We got this it last letter week and we got it in the email, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, and I don't everybody's think, reviewed yeah. this letter? Okay. Any Some questions? of us have wrote the letter. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Any questions on it? No, it was great. Okay. Then we're going to sign this. If you make a motion, I'll, I'll make a motion that we sign this letter in support of uh, Amendment uh, 318 by Senator Hines. Second, yes, second. Yes. All in favor? Aye, aye. Okay. Scream it from the mountaintops, too. Uh, yeah. Okay, next item is the Farmer's Market Return to Main Street location that's in the triangle by the library. Last year they were up at the uh, at the, the, at the uh, bank. bank. Yeah. Uh, this year they're going to, to return. Anybody have any uh, questions about that? That's a good move. I think so too. Now they were there. What about five years? First couple years were at Pumpkin the, Hollow. The, yeah. Then they were down. They were Pumpkin Hollow about five years here or four years here. Then they went up to the bank. Now they want to come back. Good idea. All right. Um, they need approval for us? I assume they oh. need to get approval from Kenny. And then um, I'll, from Grant. I'll approval make the, from you would, would I'll, mean approval from Okay. I'll, I'll make the motion yeah. that the uh, the farmers, we can we can allow the farmers market to return to the center of town uh, on Main Street, the triangle, um, by the library. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, request for farm stand. What is that? I had been approached by a resident who had uh, asked if she could have a farm stand out there. I said, please send me something about that. And I never got anything about it. I you said, mean at the farmer's market or no, somewhere else? No, uh, somewhere else. I, I don't even know exactly where at this point. Um, do, we, do we have any rules for that? Uh, we don't. And what I would have done after looking at it and thinking it over, which I did without actually having received it, was to figure out that it... Uh, if any, if it concerned anyone, it would be the Board of Health. So I checked in with Ginny, and she says that yes, for anyone selling uh, any kind of processed good, jams and jellies, they have to have a Board of Health inspection of their kitchen okay. um, in order to sell those things. And they actually have shut people down um, until they until they comply. Uh, but I never, I, I hadn't heard anything there since then. I was hoping to hear something now. by now, but okay. But didn't right. so. That's, so we'll, uh, we'll just table that for now. That's out. Okay. Yeah. I thought that that was a part of the right to farm part that farmers can sell their things at a produce thing as of as of right. Um, well, that, uh, <laughs> if it's actual produce from the ground, from the earth, I, it's like. I mean, used uh, to have one, you know, up at the. Uh, yes, at, pro produce at, is at the is the not regulated by the Board of Health. Right. Uh, but I don't think that's a right to farm thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so either. But but as long as it's 
it's a product, it's a farmed product, or or eggs. Like, you know, there's somebody up here that yeah. has a little farm yeah, yeah, yeah. that has e eggs and other yeah. stuff from their garden. Uh, what could go wrong? Eggs are pretty solid. Okay, next item on the agenda, we have appointments. I, everybody has seen the list of appointments. Um, there's just one addition that I have to the list, that's Adam Baker as Deputy Chief uh, under the Fire Department. Uh, everything else looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to make one motion for the staff, and I'll make one motion for the committees, and I'm not going to sign these until after the meeting. I don't want to take up the time for me to sign these right now. So I'll make a motion that we approve all the staff appointments through June 30th, 2019. Um, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, we have one regional appointment. Uh, that's Kate French to the Fred Wells Scholarship Committee representative. Uh, I'll make a motion that we appoint Kate as the regional representative to the Fred Wells Scholarship Committee representative. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? That's still June 30th, uh, 2019. Aye. Okay. Um, and then we have committee appointments. Uh, I'll make a motion for committee appointments through uh, June 30th, 2019, June 30th, 2020, and June 30th, 2021 that involve committees throughout the town. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the, uh, the named representatives to those committees. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Battle with that. <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda is items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Uh, the first item is to uh, appoint Ira Band to the school committee through May 16th, 2019. Is that, that the date of our next election, election meeting? Next election. Next meeting. election? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tom, do you want to give us a little rundown on that? Yes. Uh, Ira Band had uh, decided not to run for re-election this year. No one else decided to run, and he's been asked by the school committee uh, and, and accepted uh, that he would be willing to be a member for one more year. Uh, earlier, Elaine Campbell and Michael Merritt were in in order to support that, um, but since the item wasn't coming up until uh, until now, I, I suggested that they just uh, check in with John. And yeah, I, Ira's been on the committee for a number of years, and, and we're, he's just extending for a year. Okay, to, to make sure there's no vacancy there. Great. All right, so a simple matter. I'll make a motion that we appoint Ira Band to the school committee Second. through uh, May 16th of 2019. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Next item, sign stipend forms for stipend employees. Okay. Um, again, why don't, why don't we sign these after the meeting? And just remember, don't sign your own. Okay, that's just just a caveat. I'll make a motion that we sign all the stipends. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, and we'll sign those after the meeting. Um, Tom, you have your update? Yes, I do. For committees and boards, I have brought up the select board banner for the Sunderland Parade. It's right behind you there, John. Oh, here, here we is. are. Um, <clears throat> that's the one that was used during the 250th. Great. Somebody okay. holds one end, somebody holds the other end, and one person waves behind the middle, I guess. Can, can I ask a question about that? Sure. If, um, if you're just because that just struck me as a little on the boring side, that sign. I mean, it's perfectly nice. It's per but uh, I. Um, I forget when it, uh, I think I was talking to my daughter about this, about the sign. 
So her suggestion was Conway rules your town drools. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but the, the, another suggestion um, that, uh, that after she thought about it, she said, why don't you just put to, to, the, to the second best town around? And I like that. I, I I actually did like that, and I thought it would give a chuckle, and we, so you know, people remember Conway a little bit. We got a sense. Do of we it. really want to insult them like that though? During their second three, best is good. The silver medal people are gratified for a whole life with the silver medal. <laughs> Glad to see your competitive spirit coming out. Yeah. Leave time there though. Maybe we can print up T-shirts. All right. There you go. You have uh, this five is, days. This is next Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. What is it? Ten thirty. We we have to. Uh, I I, to I send. Out, I belatedly sent out the logistics. Right, right. right. Thank, you thank sent you for. Sent, uh, oh, sent sent it out. Great. Right. I just didn't yeah. know where we should go, and mm. and Me, thought it might not be obvious. Meet at the tree. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Meet at the tree. Right. Okay. All right, can um, everybody make that on Saturday? Yeah. Okay. So so if you have any questions, I've included their contact information here. Um, okay. You know, day of, before, whenever. Uh, Gentlemen wear straw hats in summer celebrations between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Straw Where can we get straw hats? Uh, Anywhere. I have a couple. Anywhere. I'm okay. not going to make too big an event out of this. I'm <laughs> just going to mark. I'll create you a t-shirt. I'm not going to wear your dress, right. dress blues? Yeah, no. Yeah, no I'm not gonna your wear saber. Dress I want to see you with your saber. That's okay. That's okay, funny. my saber. Okay. okay. My Malamook sword, huh? Okay. Uh, and the office got a phone message for anyone wishing to support the transgender equality bill on the November state ballot. To learn more, let me know. Uh, I can send you stuff. Or to sign on, go to freedommassachusetts.org or email hannahs at massequality.org. That information's all there for you. Uh, yeah, better, better go to them than me. Uh, committees, because uh, all I have is uh, very basic information. Um, I sent a draft advertisement for the new position approved at town meeting to the personnel committee, uh, the administrative assistant to various boards, and did not receive any negative comments. If any of you would like to look at them, the uh, uh, it, the, the uh, advertisement, um, Please let me know, but I intend to post the position in the recorder and on the website and on the board out here uh, later this week and get that moving. I've been I've been asked to move on that expeditiously by at least one of the people who was wanting this. Well, certainly, if the personnel committee doesn't have any comments that are adverse, I I don't see the need to, to look it over. Uh, departmental news. Ah, John mentioned before, I've been appointed as the Mass Municipal Management Association representative for Region 1 to the Mass Municipal Association. So I will be attending MMA board and local government advisory committee meetings, as well as John. This, this will probably make Conway the most powerful um, municipality in the Commonwealth. Conway rules. In this particular Conway rules. And Tom's first meeting is tomorrow. It's true. Yeah. That's why we got to get out soon. <laughs> when you get to sleep. It's an early. Got to be on the road by six in the morning. Early. Um, on Thursday, I attended a workshop put on by the FERCOG featuring a member of the Cannabis Control Commission. One issue I was particularly interested in has not been settled: whether a town can create a bylaw stricter than the state law mandating a 500-foot buffer between a commercial operation and a school. That is, say, a thousand-foot buffer. The law apparently allows only for reducing the distance. Mm. But laws of s smaller political entities have traditionally been allowed to create stricter laws than the larger political entity. You can always create something that's stricter. You can't loosen state law, but you can create something that's stricter. So this has not been decided. Um, the question has been noted by others, so there may be a decision before too long. So it says so that we could we could pass a law for a 50 foot buffer. That's the way the law seems to be written. I, I, I've read some other, not 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 having to do with this particular item, but there mm -hmm. are other laws that were um, stricter in terms of again. I won't mention the the topic, but uh, 
Uh, that was that was the AG uh, basically put that down. In other words, you can't have a stricter law than the state law for uh, for lengths of um, buffers. Mm. At least this is this is what I've read. Makes sense. Yeah. But you can have, you can have. You can have a bar that sells alcohol right next to a school. You can have a convenience store that sells cigarettes right next to the school. I guess they don't want to be uh, disadvantaged. Exactly. Um, last year, the select board prioritized succession planning as a need uh, for the uh, FERCOG's local direct technical assistance program for which they get an annual state grant. I'm pleased to report that the FERCOG is going, going to sponsor a countywide training in succession planning. Details to come. Uh, it wills, wills and trusts. Which sorry? Su succession is wills and trusts. No. Uh, no succession of personnel, department, department heads, that sort of thing. Uh, a resident ran over an object in a road and wondered whether the town would pay for the damage. Our insurer Maya has not allowed the claim. It is worth emphasizing that the town needs notice of any defect in a road, as defined under Chapter 84, with reasonable time to repair it, or we will not be negligent in accordance with Massachusetts general law, and our, sure, and our, our insurer will be unable to accept these liability claims. Also, the town cannot be held liable for damages that are caused by objects originating from unknown sources or other causes that are unreported. And um, my understanding is this incident happened on a state road? No. Oh, no. it did not? No, this was not a state road. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a town There may road. have been another one on a state road. Oh, know. okay. W w was it a rock? No. What well, was it? I'll, I'll show you yeah. after the meeting. Okay. 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 We'll oh. you, you wrote it okay. cryptically. So I well, it's, it's, I'm giving the general principle here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in other news, Conway's joint project for, with Ashfield for municipal vulnerability preparedness. This is vulnerability to climate change, the, the impacts thereof, um, is moving forward. Our joint project is moving forward with a listening session based on the recent workshop slated for June 20th. Please save the date for that. It would be good to have people show up. We're getting a grant for that? Uh, we did get a grant oh, for that. This is being we funded nice. Nice. by that. We will, this, the, this will result in a plan that will, and a uh, status that will allow us to <coughs> apply for funds. Do you have a time for that, June 20th? I don't yet. Um, I printed out um, oh, a copy of the of the plan so far. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll have so that. Far, oh, oh, I have um. Take a look at it. I, I know what I have. I, I do have it here. 6.30 <laughs> to 7.30. This is actually the uh, the flyer for it. I do have that. Sorry. Um, and it's going to be at FERCA? No. Nope. Conway Town Hall. Oh. Right, right across. Um, and I will have a joint resolution for adopting the plan, a joint between Conway and Ashfield. We will, uh, there's a draft. We're going to post this to the website soon, uh, along with information about the listening session. But you heard it here first, uh, and and we'll probably be able to sign that uh, joint resolution July 9th. Ashfield has dibs on July 21st. They meet the same night we do. Uh, also, one thing that's not on here, um, I will have a letter. Uh, to sign based on the town meeting warrant article in support of renewable energy where the Board of Selectmen was charged with sending the governor and legislature copies of our resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I apologize for not having gotten that ready yet, but I'll have that ready for the next meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns? No. I saw okay. enough already. You all set? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. You, you do have a concern? No, I don't. No, okay. Okay, mail is the next item. Okay, we all got our uh, beacons. Again, this is a very good publication of the Massachusetts Municipal Association. It comes out monthly. Uh, it's a good idea to go through and, and read these articles. They're, they're very timely. Um, 
we received a letter uh, we received a letter from a Conway resident who was upset with uh, my article in the reporter um, that's all I'll say about it I just want to note that uh, that was that was sent to us okay Next item, next meeting. Okay, our next meeting is June 25th here in the town offices at 6 p.m. Um, okay, so right now uh, we will go into executive session uh, for reason six to consider the purchase of real estate. If the chair declares that the open meeting may be, may have been and have an effect on negotiating position of the public body, and I certainly do think that. And secondly, uh, reason seven, to comply with any general special uh, law, review and approval of executive session minutes. All right, we'll take a roll call vote. And we'll, actually, we'll, actually we'll, if, if in the body of the motion you put that we're going to oh, adjourn we're going, right we're after. Going to, we're going to adjourn from executive session. Yeah. Yes. Phil? Yes. 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 And yes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Dan.